Hey everyone, nobody here. Volatile is the best void keyword. It's satisfying, effective, and on Titan, it will heal you. Bungie agrees. In Season of the Risen, we had Volatile Flow, a two energy artifact mod that made all void weapons shoot volatile rounds for 15 seconds if you picked up a void elemental well. Glorious. Unfortunately, as an artifact mod, this is long gone. Now the only way to get volatile rounds is through Echo of Instability, which activates on grenade kills for 9 seconds. I want to make things explode in grape flavor, so that's what's going on here today. Obviously, the subclass is Void, and Void Titans have the aspect Controlled Demolition, which makes all abilities cause volatile, and triggering the volatile explosions will heal you. The regen is substantial in instance, so no need to go overboard on defense here. As a Titan who wants to throw as many grenades as possible, there are a few armor exotics to consider. The first is Armamentarium, which gives you a second grenade charge. This is a good play if you use a Demolitionist or Wellspring weapon to generate the energy to fill those charges. For instance, I have this Reckless Oracle that's been very good to me. I've also been working on a crafted Hall of Denial for Enhanced Wellspring. Next, there is also Second Chance, which gives you an extra melee charge. Yes, melee, but it makes shield throws anti-barrier for champions, and since the shield throw will give you an overshield, you can combine this with the offensive bulwark aspect for increased grenade energy regen. You can also use mods and fragments to cause melee hits to generate grenade energy. This is a good choice for Lost Sector or Nightfall versions. The big one though, in my opinion, is Heart of Inmost Light. There's a few reasons why. Number one, using any ability makes the other two recharge significantly faster. And number two, it also empowers those abilities. Both of these effects can stack two times. If you're willing to use barricades to prep your abilities, then getting grenade kills is much easier at any difficulty thanks to the empowered grenades. You get them more often, they'll be stronger, and you don't really have to do anything too out of your way to get the most out of this one. It's my pick for sure. Next would be weapon choices. Remember, only void weapons can shoot volatile rounds, so we can narrow down the exotic options quite a bit. First is Graviton Lance. This is what most people think of when making a Void Explosion build, and for good reason. However, since Graviton sends enemies flying when it kills them, the volatile portion of the explosions doesn't really spread as effectively as you may want. You would be better off just building into Graviton's explosions themselves, rather than trying to force it into this build. That said, there is one other Void exotic known for spreading damage, Le Monarch. On a perfect draw, you'll spread poison damage over time around the target. This is beautiful for volatile rounds, since the dot will begin building toward triggering the actual explosions. You'll also be getting intrinsic overload when the next season begins, so this will most likely be the best choice in harder content for volatile round setups. Not to mention void builds in general. Speaking of weapons getting buffed, Collective Obligation from Vow of the Disciple will be getting some heavy upward movement soon. Bungie stated that they will be removing the cooldown and making its properties take effect faster. This is definitely the best way to spread volatile all of the time, but unfortunately I haven't got my hands on this one yet, so you'll have to test it yourself. My bad, I'm working on it. If you want to do big boss damage, it's very hard to beat Deathbringer. When it's buffed by volatile and either Font of Might or Argent Ordnance, you can do some crazy numbers. In raid scenarios, this baby will put you at the top of the damage list no problem. Best of all, you can trigger multiple volatile explosions from single rockets since the orbs tend to space themselves out a bit. In solo cases, orb 1 will apply and orb 2 will explode in a nice chain, and in team scenarios, this is even better because between orbs your teammates damage should proc the explosions. I highly recommend it, especially since you don't have to worry about precision hits. If I'm not wearing Deathbringer, I'll probably be wearing Traveler's Chosen. Surprising, I know, since this is a kinetic sidearm. But don't be fooled, the Catalyst confers full auto and osmosis, so not only will you build stacks to regen abilities, but anytime you throw your grenade to get volatile rounds, Traveler will swap to Void to match you. I was genuinely surprised just how well this works, so give this one a shot if you want to use a special weapon in your energy slot. That's all for the exotic talk, so I'm going to move on to legendaries now. There are four main desirable perks that synergize well here. I've mentioned all but the last at this point, but to reiterate, that's Osmosis, Demolitionist, Wellspring, and finally, Repulsor Brace. I'm just going to point out some noteworthy choices with these next. It's not a comprehensive list. Snorri FR5. It's a world drop precision fusion rifle. 
It can roll Wellspring, and you probably have a roll or two sitting around somewhere, but the real special part is that you can go the Reservoir Burst route for double explosions. Likely Suspect. It's the Throne World Rapid Fire Fusion Rifle. No Reservoir Burst, but it is craftable with great options in Column 3 to go next to Enhanced Wellspring. Pointed Inquiry. It's the craftable Throne World 150 round per minute Scout Rifle. This one gets adaptive munitions, so if you want to go all void in a match game scenario, this is a great pick. Vouchsafe, the Dreaming City 200 RPM Scout Rifle. This one is focusable at the war table and the helm for very cheap and is a great budget option if you're new or low on materials. Has many great perks outside of Wellspring and scales well into the end game, where scouts are very nice to have. The 7th Seraph Sidearm is a 360 lightweight sidearm. It comes from Dares on a loot rotation, and this is currently the only option if you want to use Warmind cells from a Void weapon, so keep it in mind. Corrective Measure The 450 Machine Gun from Vault of Glass. Demolitionist with Firefly. That's all. To end off the weapon section, there are two very standout choices. First is Unforgiven, the 750 SMG from Duality. It's the only weapon with Demolitionist Repulsor Brace as a perk combo. Repulsor will proc its overshield from volatile enemies, which triggers offensive bulwark. In short, kills will charge your grenade from both demolitionists and subclass synergy on top of debuff target kills giving you shields. If you don't feel like using Repulsor Brace, you could also go with Demolitionist Frenzy. The last one is Hollow Denial, the craftable trace rifle from Season of the Haunted. Its unique property, aside from being a trace, is adaptive munitions in Column 3 to pair with either Wellspring or Repulsor Brace. This makes all Void viable in a match game content scenario. It's excellent, especially if paired with an Osmosis Kinetic so that you could swap if you ever run out of ammo. Plenty of options, and in case you were worried, the Funnel Web does work great. That concludes the gear section, so let's go over the subclass options real quick. Control Demolition and Echo of Instability are the big important ones. Shield Throw is the better melee to spread Volatile since it has range and bounces. Since it also gives you an overshield, Offensive Bulwark works excellently for grenade regen alongside it. Magnetic grenades are the best at getting kills and have great homing in PvE. For Fragments, there are four slots. Echo of Instability for the Volatile Rounds, Echo of Persistence for Extended Buff Timers, Echo of Starvation for Devour on Orb Pickup, and then a Free Space. Since we're exploding things, Echo of Expulsion usually sounds the best to me. And speaking of explosions, if you use an uncharged melee while you have an overshield, that counts for applying Volatile too. So now you have many ways to cause Volatile. Hitting your shield throw causes Volatile, gives an overshield, and speeds up grenade recharge. Grenades cause Volatile, and give you 10 seconds of Volatile rounds when you get a kill with them. Exploding a Volatile enemy heals you. Picking up an orb starts to devour, and your barricade empowers your other abilities as well as recharging them. So sounds good, you're rolling. No combat mods needed to make it work. For standard mods though, focus on resilience, discipline, and strength. Your recovery is handled by overshields and devour, so focus on getting grenades and melee back ASAP. The mods that give you ability energy will be very helpful since they work in tandem with Heart of Inmost Light. That would be impact induction, kickstart mods, etc. Since you'll be focused on void weapons, you'll also want to slot in Harmonic Siphon alongside the orb ability regen mods for your legs. And then finally, if you can fit them, the region on ability use mods would be nice if you can fit them on your class item between those crammed artifact mod slots. I don't think this build requires much thought on the combat mod front. You're going to be using a void weapon and getting grenade killers, so a basic combo of elemental armaments and elemental ordnance to activate Font of Might will take you very far. You'll have room for elemental charge and argent ordnance if you're using a rocket, or you can double down on Void Wells with Well of Tenacity for some beefy damage resistance. If you're using Traveler's Chosen, you could also consider a combination of Quick Charge and Surprise Attack so that sidearm kills will charge you and then cash out. Overall, I'm a fairly big fan of this one. You have a sort of rotation in order to throw those grenades, toss the shield, and keep the debuff coming, which reminds me a lot of my Final Fantasy XIV Black Mage days. You don't need any hard-to-get items to make it work, so give it a shot with just the subclass and build into it if you end up enjoying the grape explosions as much as I have. Most of the items to make it work in high-level content are straightforward to get, aside from the combat mods, so you may even have the good choices lined up without even realizing it.
I may be a bit sparse over the next couple of weeks thanks to the new season and some real life stuff happening. I'll see if I can sneak some time in just to put something out there to keep up my schedule. But either way, thanks for your time and I'll see you around.